So the next question wants us to determine the distance traveled and the displacement traveled from t equal to 0 to t equal to 4 seconds. Distance is a scalar quantity that represents the length of path from the initial point to the final point. So it really doesn't depend on the initial and the final point, but it depends on the path that you take. But the displacement of an object is simply defined as the difference between the final point and the initial point. So the displacement between two objects really is a state function. It depends only on the initial and the final point. Keep in mind that generally the position vector is defined as r is defined as x i plus y j. So the displacement delta r is going to be equal to delta x i plus delta y j. which essentially is equal to x final minus x initial i plus y final minus y initial j. So <coughs> x initial will be equal to x at t equal to 0, which is going to be 0, x final will be equal to x at t equal to 4, which is going to be 20 meters. In the same manner, y initial is y at t equal to 0, which is 0 meters. And y final is y at t equal to 4 seconds. And that, my friend, is equal to 10 multiplied by 4 seconds minus 2 multiplied by 4 seconds all squared. This is 40 minus 4 times 4 is 16. So 16 times 2, that gives us 32. So this is 32. And if we simplify, y final will be equal to 8 meters. So this means that the displacement of the particle delta r will be equal to delta x. And delta x is x final minus x initial. What is x final? It's 20 minus x initial is 0. So this gives us 0i plus y final is 8, y initial is 0, so this is going to be equal to 8j meters. So this defines the displacement of the particle. Distance is the maximum, d is the, max, is, is, is the magnitude of displacement, which is going to be equal to 20 squared plus 8 squared, all of these in meters. So clearly you can see from this calculation that our displacement is a vector and our distance is a scalar quantity. Why? Because in our displacement function we have what the i and the j which indicates directions. In our distance equation we just have a number and a unit which just indicates a size or a magnitude. So the next question is we need to calculate the velocity of the car as a function of time, the acceleration of the car as a function of time. Generally, we know that r is equal to xi plus yj plus zk and v is dr over dt which is dx over dti plus dy over dtj plus dz over dtk. 
In this particular case, this is zero. Similarly, A is dv over dt, which is dvx over dti plus dvy over dtj plus dvz over dtk. Evidently, in this case, this is zero. So the question wants us to calculate v as a function of t and a as a function of t. So let's start with v. So um, v will be equal to vxi plus vyj. vx is dx over dt. dx over dt is 5. So this is going to be 5i plus vy is, this is vy, this is vx, vy is dy over dt, dy over dt is 10 minus 40j, and all of these is in meters per second. So this is this is V as a function of T. What you can deduce from here is Vx is equal to 5 meters per second and Vy is equal to 10 minus 4T meters per second. What you need to take note here is this. Vx is just a number. That means it's constant. If it's constant, therefore Vax will be zero. In other words, the acceleration in the x direction will be zero. Vy is a function of t. That means that the acceleration in the x direction is not zero, but a constant. So, Ax, which is dvx dt, will be 0. Ay, which is dvy over dt, will be equal to 0 minus 4 meters per square second. Therefore, the acceleration A will be equal to negative 4 j meters per square seconds. This defines the acceleration and right here this defines the velocity as a function of time. Beautiful, isn't it? Keep in mind the acceleration in the y direction, this is vy, is constant, the acceleration in the x direction is zero. It will play an important role in the next question. The last question is for us to calculate the average velocity and the average acceleration between t equal to zero and t equal to three. If you recall, by definition, v average is just the change in r divided by the change in t and a average it's just the change in v divided by the change in t so this means that you have here rf minus ri divided by tf minus ti. This is v average and a average will be equal to vf minus vi divided by tf minus ti. So this is what we are going to use in calculating 
the average velocity and the average acceleration. So what is RF and what is RI? RI is equal to R at t equal to zero, which will be equal to zero I plus zero J. Similarly, RF will be equal to R at t equal to three. This is gonna be three times five, that gives us 15 I plus five times 10, this gives us 50, five squared is 25 times two, that gives us 50, so this is zero J. So this means that the change in R will be 15 minus zero, which is 15 I, zero minus zero, which is just zero. As a result, V average will be equal to 15 I minus zero divided by three minus zero and this will give us 5i meters per second. This right here gives us the average velocity. The next target is for us to calculate the average acceleration. And by definition, the average acceleration is given by this. What is VI? VI is the value of V at t equal to zero, which means that if you look at it carefully, VI will be equal to at t, this is zero, this is going to be 5I plus 10J meters per second. VF that will be V at T equal to 3. So this will be 5i plus 10. 3 times 4 is 12. So this is going to be 12 minus 10. So this is minus 2j meters per second. So delta V will be equal to 5i five 5i five minus 5i is 0 minus 2j minus 10j this is negative 12j meters per second so this is the change in velocity which is in the y direction and we can clearly see why that is the case because the velocity in the x direction is constant that would mean that the change in velocity will only be in the y direction Hence, A average will be equal to minus 12J meters per square seconds divided by 3 minus 0. So this is equal to negative 4J meters per square seconds. So this gives us the average acceleration of the car between t equal to 0 and t equal to 3 seconds. Thank you.